Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, sharing with us this morning, based on what the Lord has laid on my heart to share with you all, in accordance with this word concerning the healing of the body. I was, I had an experience with the law. That was this past Thursday, a few days ago. I went to visit a friend somewhere and uh, as I pulled in into the parking lot, the presence of the Lord came upon my truck, inside my truck. And I knew God was going to talk to me about certain things. And some of the things that he talked with me about that it is pertaining to many, some of your pastors have already shared with you some of them because I believe strongly that those things have to do, has to do with some of the things that the Lord has in plan ahead for us to do together, we have to lay the ground and put those things in place. And it's important for us to know that sometimes the Lord corrects us, and sometimes He will rebuke us, and sometimes He will give us instruction about things that we need to do. The most important thing for us to know is that to note is that. When we are quick to obey God, He blesses us. A quick act of obedience brings the blessing of God into our life. Now, what did the Lord tell me about? I'm going to read because I wrote it down as He was speaking to me. He said, A lot of my people are mentally ascending to my word. They say that they believe my word, but they do love to argue about my word so as to bring it to the level of their natural faith. But my word is far above and higher than that of the natural faith of men. My word rules over the natural world. It overrules natural faith. You can't have faith in me and still believing in accordance to the order of this natural world. You have to live in according to the order of the world of the spirit from where my world comes from. That's how to live by faith in God. To see and speak as I speak in accordance to my world. Now, what is God saying to us there? God is telling us that for us to see as it pertains to healing, and I believe this pertains to pros the prosperity of the believer as well. Healing, faith for healing, faith for prosperity, faith in the blessing of the, of the Lord works when we don't, we put ourselves out of the natural environment that we are living in and begin to see in the realm of the spirit what God has made provision for us concerning those things we are believing in him for. If we can see it in the spirit, it is ours. Now what God is saying here is that a lot of Christians are mentally ascending to his word. That means they just saying things with their mind, but their heart is not believing in it. They do not commit to the word of God to live in accordance to what he says. And that is, that is what hinders the faith of many people. And often at times, certain Christians, as the Lord told me, do struggle with the word of God. They struggle for the word of God to be performed in their life. And, they, <clears throat> and as they struggle with it, they begin to bring the word of God down 
to the level of the natural world where they are living around them. And they, they bring it down to that level and render the faith of God inoperative in their life. And God is unable to do anything for it in their life. The Bible says a double-minded believer, a person cannot receive anything from the Lord. Now, as I was in my vehicle at that moment, I, the Lord directed me to look at Mark chapter 9. It's the story of the boy with, with the epilepsy. The, the parents of the boy, the father of the boy, had brought a little boy to the disciples of Jesus to cast out the demon out of this boy. And uh, we could see in that encounter in, uh, in Mark chapter 9, from, if you read that story from verses 14 down to verse 29, we will see that the first thing that happened was that the father of this boy was hard going with the disciples of Jesus Christ. He really doubted whether they could cast out the demon from his little boy. That means the man came to the disciples already with a preconceived idea of how healing will work. And as he was hanging with the disciples, what happened as a result of this? The disciples could not operate. They could not do anything. They could not cast out the demon out of the little boy. Now, the Bible identified the spirit, as Jesus said, that was in the boy. He didn't call it the epilepsy spirit. He called it the deaf and dumb spirit. Now, a deaf and dumb spirit is a stubborn spirit. I've had encounters with it many times. I... I believe I share with some of you sometimes they go about the story of a sister in Estonia when I was a missionary in the nation of Estonia. This sister came to the church with her son and uh, she needed healing for her son. And as I was, I prayed, laid my hands on the son to pray, immediately. I was prompted by the Holy Spirit to lay my hands on the mother as well. And the first words that came out of my mouth at that time that really surprised me was, you deaf and dumb spirit, come out of her. And as I said that, I saw her immediately falling down under the power of the Holy Spirit. She was shaking on the floor. I had to follow through with her, lay my hands upon her to pray more so that, you know, she would be released completely from that spirit until she became still on the ground. And the husband was there on that particular occasion. He saw what was going on. And it was later on, in my conversations with both of them, that both the husband and the woman had been high going with one another at home before the girl came to church, whether to bring their son, you know, to, to the meeting, <laughs> to be prayed for or not. You know, and the spirit of argument is not good. We don't argue the word of God. The Bible says in Psalm 118, David said there, yeah, Your word, O Lord, is settled in the heaven forever. God's word is already settled in the heavens. And the way we bring it to come to pass in our life in this world is by us agreeing with the word of God concerning what it says so that God's word will do what it says it will do for us in our, in our life on this earth. Now, in Mark chapter 9, you know, you, you could see here that the first question that Jesus asked the, the, when he came down from the mountain of transfiguration in verse 16 was, it was this. What are you arguing with them about? 
Because Jesus saw that they were arguing about something. What were they arguing about? They were arguing about faith for healing. You couldn't do that. They were trying to reason out how God will work. Now, understand one thing. A religious demon is the biggest enemy of faith in God. It's easier for an unbeliever just coming from the street into the house of God, or even who doesn't even come to church on the street who hear the gospel of Jesus Christ for healing to get healed, than for somebody who has a religious spirit in him to receive healing. Because that religious spirit needs to be taught again, again, and again about faith so that that person will believe. And often at times, religious people like to argue about the word of God because they see scriptures based on what their denomination has taught them about and based about what they've been taught about healing growing up. And that's sometimes what brings a lot of people to bring their faith to the level of the natural world. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying God cannot use the doctor to bring healing to manifest in the body of somebody. God can work with anything. He will meet you at the level of your faith. But he, he, you can receive anything from God when we believe in, in his promises based on the natural reasoning of men, of the world around us. We say, oh, everybody always believe in God. Yes, I believe the same thing too. The Bible says in James 2, 19, you believe in God? <laughs> James said, yes. <laughs> Even the devil believes also, but he trembles. The devils trembles. But we saw that in this little boy here. The devil trembles when he saw Jesus Hacking on authority, but before Jesus did that, you know, Jesus in verse 23 has the father of the boy. Um, you know, if you can, the father was asking Jesus if he can do something. In other words, he was telling Jesus, Do you believe? I do I believe? Can you do something to help me? I mean, if you really believe, Jesus could help you. You don't need it to, really need to be asking, can you do this for me? Or do I have to go to the synagogue or look for somebody else to cast out the demon from my little boy? And Jesus responded, everything is possible for him who believes. And, you know, immediately the Bible says there in verse 24, the father of the boy Acknowledge something there. He said, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Now, how did the spirit of unbelief go to this man? He needed Jesus' faith to overrule that. He was given permission by saying those words to Jesus to move into the life of his son and cast out that demon when he said, help me. You know, and it's important that people who like to argue, they humble them, need to humble themselves and say, Lord, help me. I, I can't believe beyond my reasoning. I can't believe beyond in your world to heal me, you know, beyond the, the, the natural world, what I've been taught to believe. And, and often at times that prevents people from receiving healing, you know. We, we could look at the story of Jairus, this, of the, this, uh, the, the leader of the synagogue who came to Jesus a few chapters before this in Mark chapter 5. His son, I mean, his daughter was sick and he was very close to death. And we saw that in that story in Mark chapter 5. You know, the Bible says from verse 22, they said, Then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus came there, seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him. Now, compare the faith of Jairus with the faith of this man in Mark chapter 9. Jairus did not argue with Jesus. He says, What did he say? He said, My daughter is dying. Please. 
Come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and leave. Hallelujah. She will be healed and leave. He doesn't want the daughter to die. He said, come and lay your hands. That means Jairus already agreed within himself. He has made up his mind that if Jesus comes, my daughter is going to be healed. This man in Mark chapter 9 was arguing with the disciples. So his faith could not work. And uh, that was what basically the Lord was trying to let me know. And, and that's why I'm, I'm sharing this with us today. Because it's important for us as Christians to, to, to understand that our faith as Christians will not work when we're arguing with people. There are a lot of Christians who like to argue with Jehovah Witnesses, Seventh-day Adventists. I mean, all those denominations not people who do not believe in healing, in the word of healing. You don't need to argue about healing. You either take it as God said it, hallelujah, and let it work for you. You run with it. You believe it or you just leave it and go. You don't argue with people. When they start arguing with us, what do we do as Christians? We just move on away from them because we don't want their own belief to affect our faith. Just as it affected the, the faith of the disciples of Jesus when God came. I mean, Jesus came down and from that mountain I asked them, what are you people arguing with my disciples about? Because Jesus knew that they were, they were trying to hinder their faith from being operative. And for us as pastors, for us as ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we need to be very, very careful with people who love to reason, who love to argue. I know there are some pastors, denominations who, who do not believe in healing, you know, when you talk about healing and all those things, but you, you, we love them. It doesn't mean that we don't love them, we, but we pray for them that the Lord will open their eyes to see the truth. No, because if you read that story in Mark chapter 9 very well, Jesus said there in verse 29, he said to his disciples when they, they asked him, why is it that we cannot cast out this demon? It, you, you will note something that Jesus did not say because you are arguing with them. But it was really the reason because in verse 16, that was what Jesus pointed out to them. But in verse 19, 29, Jesus said, this kind cannot come out can only come out by prayer and fasting. And sometimes we need to learn how to fast and pray for people in the spirit because that's the most effective way to be able to, to get around that spirit. Those who do not believe in the word of healing, he sent his word and he healed them of their diseases and delivered them from their captivity. Hallelujah. So when we pray for them, we're loving them. Hallelujah. You cannot pray for people you don't love. And now this healing always comes and healing always flows. Jesus always wants to heal people. A few days ago, I received an image of a little girl, I believe she has some worms that are heating up her eyes, her eyes. I mean, the person who sent this email to me, video clip of the little girl crying, said, please pray for my daughter to be healed. And I know this brother very well to be a matured Christian. I said, you are a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know the right thing to do. I do what James chapter 5 says. Hallelujah. It says, if any one of you sick, let them call for the others. Let the prayer of faith heal the sick as they anoint the sick with oil. And from what the, the man was explaining to me, I understood that it has to do, you know, the situation has to do with the with the father, the single father of this little girl, because the mother died some years before that time, you know, and so the man had to raise up the daughter alone by himself, and he must have done something, you know, women are better at taking care of children than, than men do. 
you know, especially at that little age for the girl. You know, there are a lot of girls' things that men don't really understand at that little age how to take care of it. So this guy got, got some diseases on her eyes that was calling, causing her pain. She was crying terribly in that video clip. And the pastor was asking for prayer. I said, you lay, I said, you lay hands on her. Anoint her with oil. Use your own faith. You know? The natural faith of a man will say, let me ask somebody else to do it for me. You can receive God's words. Speak God's words concerning healing's provision that has been made for that person to be healed. And as she lay hands on that girl, he said the girl calmed down and slept properly. I said, well, the healing process has begun. That thing is going to disappear. Hallelujah. Just rejoice before the Lord. Hallelujah. And tell the father to repent of his unbelief because the father <laughs> was thinking, well, in accordance to the natural world, what does the natural world do? Take my child to the hospital, believe more in what the doctors are saying. The doctors were telling him, your daughter is going to die if we do not, you know, get him into the surgery room so quickly. I said, well, let the doctors do what they have to do, but pastor, you pray for this, for this little girl. So this girl was anointed with toy, and immediately she calmed down and said, yeah, take that to the doctors, you know? But, you know, the healing process has begun. You see, when God told me those things a few days ago in my car that a lot of Christians like to bring his word to the level of their natural faith. They like to argue with it. They like to reason with it. Now, meditating on the word of God has nothing to do with reasoning. Philosophers like to reason. And when people who, who, who philosophers reason with one another, they compare one theory of philosophy with another person's theory of philosophy. That, that's how they reason with it, to try to see, well, what is good, what is bad, what is better for the common good of everybody so that everybody will have the natural kind of faith. And, you know, often at times in most uh, seminaries that I do know of, that's what they do. They reason with, okay, this person said this, this person said that. Look at the word of God. What did God's word say? God's word say you are healed. God's word say you are made whole. God's word say you are delivered. God's word say you will not die, but you will live to proclaim the word of the Lord. God's word says you are above only and not beneath. But God's word says by his stripes you have been healed. When we begin to speak what God's word speak, we bring in our faith to the level of God's word. The prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 55 from verse, verse 8, he says something right there that is very, very important for us to know there. He said that my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your thoughts, and your thoughts higher, my thoughts higher than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow comes down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth, and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth, it will not return to me empty. But we accomplish that what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. What is it saying right there? We cannot bring our thoughts, think about God's word the way we think in the natural world. If we do that, our faith will not work. You're killing your faith when you're thinking 
in accord and putting the words of God side by side with what the doctor's report says. God says here, yeah, my word that goes out of my mouth will not return back to me void. He said, just as the rain comes down from heaven and water the ground with the seed in it, in the ground, so that it yields something, God's word is like the washing of the water. Hallelujah. That's how it works. The more you speak it out of your mouth, the more it manifests, the more it grows. It digests that like a seed growing out of the soil so that it brings forth fruits. It manifests healing to the body. It makes you productive in your life. When you have been speaking healing, it, it brings healing into manifestation. When you are speaking about prosperity, it's bringing up the prosperity of the believer to manifest in the life of that believer. So when we speak God's word, just as he said, you might not, you don't need to reason with it. Reasoning will not help you. It's different from meditating on the word of God. You don't compare God's word with what some psychologists or philosophers have said. It's going to kill your faith. You don't compare it with what other people tell you. You go to those God's word and take God's word, just believe it for what it says concerning you. That's how it has worked for me in my own personal life. And I've seen it just as I've told you in the life of many other people how it worked, especially for that lady, Tamara, who was healed in the city of Edessa by just hearing the word of God that was preached unto her. She reached out by faith and made the word of God affected in her own personal life, applied it to her own physical body, continued to speak to her body. Hallelujah. A few weeks ago, I was having some, some pain in my hand. And, and as I, I was having that pain, you know, the, the, something just rose up within my, it came from my spirit. Speak to it. I spoke to my left hand. I say, be made whole. I commanded that pain to stop right now. And when I spoke, momentarily, it's, it obeyed me. You see, your body listens to you when you speak to your body. You can speak to your body to get healed and it's going to be healed. Because it's your body. You live in this body. It has to obey you. The devil doesn't live in you. You have authority. You have power to change your world, to change your life. To manifest healing for your physical body. So that Jesus Christ will be exalted in your life. Jesus Christ will be glorified around you in whatsoever you do. And the devil will be put to shame concerning you. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus this day, I pray for my dear brother and my dear sister even right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you for this hour of meditation upon your word, Father, Lord God. Lord, I pray that your word, oh Lord, will bring power into their life. That they will become doers of your word and not just hearers alone. I thank you for it. I bless your name for it right now. I release the power of God to manifest healing for them. And Father, I thank you for their miracles. I thank you for their testimonies. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, there are some people who have been sending us testimonies of healing. Um, others have been saying prayer requests. We do pray for people and sometimes the Holy Spirit will just lead us to tell people what to do. You know, to get healing. You know. But one thing I want to, to know that your breakthrough it's right there on your lips. You speak it with your mouth. He sent his word and he healed them and he delivered them from their captivity. The way that healing, God sent his word to you is for you to receive it with your heart and speak it out of your mouth. Don't reason with it and bring it down to your natural world. 
don't try to figure it out. How is God going to do this? How is this healing going to take place? Just say it, believe it with your heart. Like a little child will believe the mother. That baby believes the mother who's carrying her on her hands to give her food. That once the mother's breast gets to her, so that baby, that baby knows if she's going, is who or he or she is going to get full milk. And that's what happens. That's how your faith works. When you go to God's word, God's word works for you. You just believe it. And you believe it will work for you in your life. I love it with the love of God. And I want you to know Jesus, the healer, is just right there on your lips and in your heart. So speak your healing and bring it to manifest in your life. In Jesus' name, amen.